Eighth grade illustrative mathematics, unit seven, lesson nine, describing large and small numbers using powers of 10. Problem number one, match each number to its name. A, you have a one followed by six zeros. And after the six zeros would be where the decimal point belongs. So in this case, the number is one million. A matches with five, one million. B, 0 0.01. That's one zero to the left of the decimal point and one zero to the right of the decimal point followed by a one. That would be one hundredth. B matches with one, one hundredth. C, one followed by nine zeros. And to the right of the nine zeros is the decimal point. So that would be one billion. C matches with six, one billion. D, zero point and then there's five zeros followed by a one that would be one millionth d matches with three one millionth e zero point zero zero one so you have the decimal point and then two zeros to the right followed by a one that would be one thousandth e matches with two one thousandth f one followed by four zeros to the right and then to the right of the last zero there's a decimal point that would be ten thousand f matches with four ten thousand problem number two write each expression as a multiple of a power of ten a you have a four a two and a three followed by two zeros. Those two zeros mean that the value of this number is 100 times larger than 423. So we can write 423 times 10 to the second power because 10 to the second power means 10 times 10, which is 100. And 423 times 100 would be 42,300. B, two followed by three zeros to the right. Those three zeros tell me that the value of this number is a thousand times bigger than two. So we can write two times 10 to the power of three. 10 to the power of three is 10 times 10 times 10, which would be a thousand. And two times a thousand is 2000. C, we have a nine and a two followed by five zeros to the right. Those five zeros tell me that the value of this number is a hundred thousand times larger than 92. So we can write 92 times 10 to the power of 5. D, 4,000. That's 4 followed by three zeros. Those three zeros tell me that the value of this number is 1,000 times greater than 4. So we can write 4 times 10 to the power of 3. E, 80 million. That's an 80 followed by six zeros, or an 8 followed by seven zeros. The seven zeros tell me that the value of this number is 10 million times greater than eight. So we can write eight times 10 to the seventh power. F, 32 billion. That's a three and a two followed by nine zeros. The nine zeros tell me that the value of this number is a billion times greater than 32. So we can write 32 times 10 to the power of nine. This lesson is preparing you to learn how to write in scientific notation. Let's do that now. When you write an expression in scientific notation, you're going to have the decimal put directly after the first digit. So in this case, instead of being 423, it'll be 4.23. And since we move the decimal two places to the left, we need to increase the exponent by two. So now it becomes 10 to the power of four instead of 10 to the power of two. Both of these examples are expressions that are written as a multiple of a power of 10. So you can use one or both of these answers. B, two times 10 to the third is already written in scientific notation. C, 92 times 10 to the power of five. In scientific notation, we could write that as 9.2 times 10 to the power of six. Since we move the decimal point one place to the left, we have to remember to increase the exponent by one. So it goes from 10 to the fifth power to 10 to the sixth power. D, four times 10 to the power of three. That's already written in scientific notation. E, eight times 10 to the power of seven. That's also already written as scientific notation. F, 32 times 10 to the power of nine. 
Written in scientific notation, we'll move the decimal point one place to the left. So now it reads 3.2 times 10 to the power of 10. Problem number three. Each statement contains a quantity. Rewrite each quantity using a power of 10. Let me give you an example. 14 thousandths. That's written as 0 0.014. We can rewrite that using a power of 10 by moving the decimal point all the way right. So it reads 14. And to express it using a power of 10, we can write 14 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And if you wanted to write it using scientific notation, we would put the decimal point between the 1 and the 4 and write it as 1.4 times 10 to the power of negative 2. Let's try A. There are about 37 trillion cells in an average human body. The quantity that we need to rewrite using a power of 10 is 37 trillion. We can rewrite that as 37 times 10 to the power of 12 or we can rewrite that using scientific notation and write 3.7 times 10 to the power of 13. B. The Milky Way contains about 300 billion stars. We need to rewrite 300 billion. We can write that as 3 times 10 to the power of 9, and that's already written in scientific notation. C. A sharp knife is 23 millionths of a meter thick at its tip. We need to rewrite 23 millionths. We can rewrite that as 23 times 10 to the power of negative 6, or we can rewrite it using scientific notation, and that would be 2.3 times 10 to the power of negative 5. D. The wall of a certain cell in a plant is 4 nanometers thick. A nanometer is 1 billionth of a meter. We can write that as 4 times 10 to the power of negative 9, and that's also written in scientific notation. Problem number 4, from 8th grade Unit 5, Lesson 10. A fully inflated basketball has a radius of 12 centimeters. Your basketball is only inflated halfway. How many more cubic centimeters of air does your ball need to fully inflate? Express your answer in terms of pi. Then estimate how many cubic centimeters this is by using 3.14 to approximate pi. The volume of a sphere is given by the formula V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius of the sphere. Since the radius of the basketball is 12 centimeters, we can plug in 12 in place of the r. Since they want me to use 3.14 for pi, I'm going to plug in 3.14 in place of the pi symbol. Now I have all the information I need to find the volume of the fully inflated basketball. Next I need to find the information to help me find the volume of my basketball that is halfway inflated. I plugged in a 6 for the radius because 6 is half of 12 and it says that my basketball is halfway inflated. And I plugged in 3.14 to approximate pi. To find out how many more cubic centimeters my ball needs to be fully inflated, I'm going to subtract the volume of the halfway inflated basketball from the volume of the fully inflated basketball. I'm going to rewrite the multiplication in these equations so that pi, or 3.14, is at the end. Let's start with a fully inflated basketball. 4 thirds times 12 to the third power. Here's a reminder. 4 thirds, that's the same as 4 divided by 3. So you could do 4 divided by 3 times 12 times 12 times 12, which is 2,304. Next, we would multiply that by 3.14. Now let's work on the halfway inflated basketball. 4 thirds times 6 cubed. That's 4 thirds times 6 times 6 times 6. That would give us 288. Then we'd multiply that by 3.14. The volume needed will equal the difference between 2,304 and 288 multiplied by 3.14. Or in this case, approximately 2,016 times 3.14. In terms of pi, I can write it like this. Now let's find out approximately how many cubic centimeters of air we need to fill the basketball. 
2016 times 3.14 is approximately 6,330. So the total volume of air that you would need to continue to fill the basketball would be approximately 6,330 centimeters cubed. Problem number five from eighth grade unit four lesson five. Solve each of these equations. Explain or show your reasoning. Two times three is six and two times negative two C is negative four C. Now we have six minus four C equals 30. And to get the term with a C in it to be alone, we need to subtract six from both sides of the equal sign. Now to make the term have one positive C, we need to divide negative four C by negative four. And we need to divide both sides of the equal sign by negative four. Since a negative divided by a negative is a positive, this leaves us with one C or C. And 24 divided by a negative four leaves us with negative six. So for this first equation, C equals negative six. For the next one, let's get the term on the left that has the x in it by itself. We can do that by adding two to both sides of the equal sign. Now, let's make sure that we have the terms with the x in it on the left side of the equal sign, and we'll leave the nine on the right side of the equal sign. We can do this by adding six x to both sides of the equal sign. Next, to get the x to be one x, we can divide nine x by nine. But we have to remember, whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we have to do to the other side of the equal sign. For this equation, x equals one. Five times b is five b, and five times negative two is negative 10. So the equation now reads 31 equals five b minus 10. Next, I want to get the 5b by itself, so I have to get rid of the negative 10. I can do that by adding 10. But remember, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. Now the equation is 41 equals 5b. We want to turn 5b into 1b, and we do that by dividing it by 5. But we have to divide both sides by 5. And since 5 doesn't go into 41 evenly, we can leave it as an improper fraction. B equals 41 fifths. Problem number six from eighth grade unit three lesson 10. Graph the line going through negative six one with a slope of negative two over three and write its equation. Negative six is the first number in the set of coordinates. So it moves along the X axis and the negative means it moves to the left. We start at the origin where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect and we move six places to the left. The second value they gave us in the coordinates is a one. That moves along the y-axis. A positive one means we move up and put our point. The information tells us that the slope is negative two over three. The slope is rise over run. So the negative two is the rise and the three is the run. Or the rise could be 2 and the run could be negative 3. We can use this to plot new points. Start at our original point and for the rise we'll go down 2 because it says negative 2. And for the run we'll go to the right 3 because it's a positive 3. And here we can put our next point. To make our next point, let's start at the first point and this time let's go up 2. The rise will be a positive 2 and the run is a negative 3. That means we move three units to the left. And that's where we can put our third point. We have enough points to draw a line, but I'm gonna make one more point. Let's start with a point on the bottom right and go down two for the negative two rise and to the right three for the positive three run. Now we can put our fourth point and draw a line. If this was helpful, click that like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I appreciate it. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.